Hello there. Welcome to uh, Transmitter Solutions trainings on transmitters and receivers. My name is Brady Cash and I'll be your presenter today. Uh, transmitters and receivers are the bread and butter of what we do around here. I mean, obviously, our, our company name is Transmitter Solutions, which I think can be deceiving sometimes because we do a lot more than just transmitters and receivers. But truly, that's, that's really what our business model was founded upon and that's what we're really, really good at. So, we're going to take about, mm, I'd say about 30 minutes here today to discuss um, what we do and what we're good at and how you can make money selling our transmitters and receivers. Transmitters are kind of a funny thing because, you know, they don't cost a lot of money, but they can be a really serious source for revenue, we've learned as a company. And I'm going to teach you a little bit how you can make more money selling the transmitters and how you can use our transmitters as a source for, for better revenue and better service and better everything as an installer. Um, I'm going to do one thing first. Um, and I was going to save this for the end, but we had this idea at the last minute. We are really good at doing customization of transmitters. Um, we can print your company logo. We can put a name, a website, whatever you want on there so that uh, when your customer is using the transmitter, they see your name on it. When they need to order more, they will call you and you'll be the source for the more transmitters. But we are getting really good at this printing and customization of transmitters. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something kind of fun. We're going to have someone here who's attending the webinar email in a logo or a name or something. And while we're doing this presentation, by the end of it, we're going to have that logo printed right on a transmitter. So what we're going to do is we're going to post Melissa's email address here on the webinar um, and go ahead and send that in. And the first one she gets, we're going to go ahead and print that and we'll have it on a transmitter by the end of it. So her email address will be posted there. It's msnedeker at transmittersolutions.com. Hopefully you see it there. One other comment too before we get deeper into the presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to type them. Um, and as they come up, we have someone fielding the questions. They'll give them to me, and I will answer them to the best of my knowledge as they come up. <clears throat> the first thing I want to mention about transmitters is that they can be a really serious source of recurring revenue. And the reason being is, uh, I think primarily, is that they're, they're not terribly expensive. So your apartment communities, they have the funding to do it. You know, sometimes going in and getting a new gate is more expensive for them. They don't have the money to do that or if they need a, a serious service call, maybe that there isn't there. But they're always going to need transmitters. Um, whether you know, the, the, the person living there has lost the transmitter, or what seems to be happening even more frequently is, is you'll get a large community and somebody will move out. And when they move out, they don't turn their transmitter in. And so as long as they keep coming back to you, you can keep selling them transmitters. And then it's also a source of revenue for your communities. They'll turn around and they'll sell it to their tenants. Say, for example, the tenant loses the transmitter. They'll turn around and sell it to them. So that's a really easy way to make revenue. And it may seem like it's small revenue, but when it's recurring like that and, and you've got a lot of communities that you're servicing, then you have lots of small sales orders that add up and, and turn out to be a, a large source of revenue. So we've learned that as a company that, that you can make a lot of money doing this and we hope that you'll really consider that as, as an option here. Now why choose transmitter solutions? Um, well, first of all, we've, we've really focused really hard on making good quality transmitters at a very affordable price. And we've been doing this for a long time and we're, we've gotten really good at it. Um, our transmitters are affordable. I don't think you'll find much in the competition. I don't, I, I don't know of anybody in the competition who has better pricing than us. Um, and, and then on top of that, we've got high quality transmitters that, uh, that work better, that go further, that have better range. Um, we back them up with solid warranties. Um, some of our transmitters have two-year warranties and some of them have five-year warranties, but we don't have anything that has less than two-year warranties. I don't know anybody in this industry that has that kind of warranty on transmitters. And we, we truly back it up. We're confident with what we're doing and we will, if it's within that time frame, we will repair the transmitter and we will replace it for you. Um, another thing that we have, let me just grab 
one of our transmitters here. This is a very popular transmitter for us. It's called the Monarch. You've probably seen it out in your installations, or maybe you're using it. I hope you're using it already. This is a great transmitter. But if you look right here, and I press the light, can you see that green? I'm sorry, press the button, you can see that green light. Everybody see that? We have a feature in our Monarchs called Charge Guard. And when the battery starts to run low in the transmitter, you'll see that LED light will, will start to turn yellow. And then when that battery is practically dead, the LED light is red. So let's say you get in a situation where one of your, um, one of your sites calls you and they say, a bunch of our transmitters aren't working. Uh, we, need, we need to get these replaced. They're broken. Uh, the first question you can ask them is, when you push the button, what color is that LED? And when they say, oh, it looks like it's red, you know immediately, without having to go out there and look at the transmitters, that the transmitter battery is dead, and you simply replace it, or tell them that they need to replace it. So that's uh, one feature we have in it. Another thing, like I told you, this, this transmitter itself has a five-year warranty. Um, so you can, you can be confident when you're out bidding this product to your customers. Say, this is going to last at least five years. Um, so uh, it looks like we've got a question. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jordan to ask that question. We have a question asking, um, so it says, microclimate work with your little clear receivers, but what about the black one button micro plus? Yeah, micro plus, no, no. Micro click, which is by Dorking, uh, yes, we do have a compatible that works with that system, but MicroPlus is, um, as far as I know, a patented uh, system by Dorking. So no, we do not have anything that works with the black uh, receivers uh, or transmitters, but we are a distributor for Dorking. We have a really good relationship with Dorking, and so you can get those receivers and transmitters from one of your sales reps here. They're available to you if you need them. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the kind of transmitters and receivers that we offer. Uh, the first one is a dip switch transmitter, and I'm going to move over to where you can see a computer screen, and I'll be showing you a few things. This is our, this is our website, and if you've not been here, you really need to visit it. We've, we've made some really nice updates to it. It's easy to navigate, and we have everything on there, and we're really proud of it. So if you can look right here, you just go to our products, and you can go to transmitters. And the most common one that you'll know is the 300 megahertz dip switch transmitter. Um, as far as I know, and I haven't done a ton of research about this, but dip switch has been in the industry as far back as the 1950s, maybe earlier than that, I don't know. And I've, I've been doing this about 10 years, and, and I've been told that dip switch would go obsolete eventually. But I'm feeling like that's not the case. It just continues to be a product that a lot of people use. Um, it's very common, and it seems to work fine, and, and, and I, I think more than anything, the people that use the dip switch transmitters like them because they're easy to program and manage. So, um, I mean, as you know, you've got a radio receiver. It's got a set of switches. In this case, there's 10 switches. And there's 10 switches in this transmitter. You go ahead and match it up, and it'll work. What's nice, though, about our Stinger transmitter compared to the OEM uh, uh, transmitters at, at 300 megahertz is that it gets better range. Uh, a couple of reasons for that is that we put a 12-volt battery in it which makes it stronger, which makes the, the power signal stronger. Um, and then on top of that, um, you're working with some designs on some of the OEM models that have not changed over the years. Uh, we've got a better board. We've programmed the transmitter to be stronger. And if you don't believe me, try for yourself. Say someday you've got a 300 megahertz multi-code transmitter, and you've got one of our Stinger transmitters. Do a little field test and test them side by side. And you'll be surprised to see that um, our 300 megahertz Stinger goes further than theirs. Um, so we've got all kinds of dip switch transmitters. If you go back to our products, I'm sorry, you can see all the different transmitters and frequencies that we offer. Some of these are rolling code, some of them are dip switch. But we also do receivers. Some people don't know this. And this is a popular receiver that we offer. This is the Hive 300 310 receiver. This one works at 300 or 310 megahertz. And if you go to our website, which again is easy to navigate, you can go to downloads and you can look at the manual right here. And it'll show you very clearly how you switch from systems. You just remove a jumper and it changes it to from 300 to 310 megahertz. 
you remove another jumper and it changes it from eight to ten, uh, sorry, from ten to eight dip switches. So this little receiver works with, it works with Stanley, it works with linear, and it works with multi-code. Uh, this is a very popular receiver for us. It works great. It's got a two-year warranty. The pricing is awesome. If you don't know what the pricing is, then reach out to your sales rep and they can uh, inform you on what the cost is for it. Um, in addition to this dip switch receiver, we've got, oh, probably about four or five different other dip switch receivers. Um, so when you're in your free time, feel free to navigate our website as you're wondering what else we offer, and you can see there what's available. So that's our, our basic dip switch um, system. And I'm going to move over to, over to rolling code, which you know is, uh, in most cases, a push to learn button. So we'll, we'll start with the standalone systems we offer, and then we'll move on to, um, we'll move on to a little more sophisticated uh, systems that we've got. Um, so this is a really popular receiver for us. This is something that we call uh, the Mini 2 Out, or sometimes you'll hear it as, as the Standalone 85. And the reason we call it the Standalone 85 is because it holds 85 memory in its transmitter, I mean, in its, uh, in its memory. So um, I'm going to do a, a few little programming tricks in here so you can learn more about this receiver quickly. Um, as you can see here, there are two relays in it, relay one, relay two. And so that means you can operate two doors or two, two gates, um, or you can operate one single gate with what we have a, a, a latching feature that's built into this receiver. Um, so I'm going to quickly show you how you can navigate between these two relays for programming. If I press and hold this learn button, you'll see a red light come on. See that? And if I push it again, you'll see a green light, like that. Red light is the first relay. Green light is the second relay. So while that red light is on, I push the button on the transmitter. See it flash, and now it's programmed into this receiver. I don't know if you can hear that relay click, but you definitely see the light come on, showing that, that it's working. Now I'm going to go ahead and program the second relay, which is a special relay because it has a latching feature in it. That green light comes on, and you can see that that relay is holding until you press the button on the transmitter again. So that's a feature that's built right into this receiver, and for, that's one of the reasons it's really popular. Now let's say, for example, you like this receiver and you need to use both relays, but you don't want the second relay to latch. You can simply remove a jumper. I don't know if you can see that right there. There's just a little jumper. Pull it out, and now your second relay operates like the first just a momentary relay. Now, in addition to the ease of programming on this system, um, the range on it is really good. Uh, we, in our field tests, we get about five to 600 feet. And then if you use an extended antenna on it, it will about double that. Now, that's in ideal conditions where there's no crowding on the frequency. Uh, you got a line of sight. Obviously, if something gets in the way between the transmitter and the receiver, the, the signal strength is going to go down. But I've seen this work really well, um, you know, through obstructions, through walls, through doors, through all kinds of stuff. I love this product, and, and we, we move a lot of these. In addition to that, we have a, a, a cool little receiver that we call the Nano. But it does a lot more than, than a standard receiver. Uh, first of all, it's, it's part of the same family of products with that receiver I just showed you. So the range is really good. Um, you can't tie an external antenna to it, but line of sight, you get about five to 600 feet just with this little whip antenna that's, in, that's built on the board here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the reasons why I like this receiver. Okay, we're going to press this learn button in here, and there's a, there's a little beeper in here. So you'll hear it beep to know that it's in programming mode. So it's a little different. There's no light, but you will hear, hear a beep. And I'm going to program. Right now, I'm going to program in a two-button transmitter. And I programmed the first button to it. All right. And I'm going to leave this here. And hopefully, you'll be able to hear this. Maybe you won't. But believe me, it's making noise. Let's say I need to program another transmitter into this receiver. 
Now keep in mind, I need a two button transmitter that's already programmed into the memory. But I don't even need to open the box to get into this receiver to program it. So what I'll do is I'll press both buttons at the same time. You'll hear it beep, hopefully. Beep, and then I'm gonna press and hold button one. Beep again, and now I'm gonna program the next transmitter in. Okay, it's out of programming mode. And now I've got two transmitters in there, and I've only pressed the learn button one time. So that's one thing you can do. You go out on your installation. You don't want to open the box. You want to program more transmitters in. Easy to do. Uh, taking transmitters out of the memory is done the same way as putting them in. You press and hold that button, push the button on the transmitter you want to take out, and it goes right out of the memory. In addition to that, this little receiver has a built-in timer. And it's really easy to do. You press the same learn button. There's only one learn button in, in this receiver. You press and hold it till it beeps. And then you press it again for every second you want it to hold. So let's say I want it to hold for eight seconds. Let's say I'm tying this to a mag lock. Somebody's at the door, and you want the mag lock to hold for eight seconds so that it doesn't close before they open the door. Really easy. So I'm going to press and hold, beep, and I'm going to push it eight times. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'll wait for it to go out of learn mode. And if you're here with me, you could see this happening, but you'll just have to take my word for it. When I push the transmitter, now the relay holds for eight seconds. And then in, after eight seconds, the relay will release. Very cool product, very easy to use. Um, and I believe that timer is anywhere, you may, you may need to check the spec on it, but I think it's anywhere from one to 60 seconds. So if you have the patience to push that button 60 times, you can get that thing to hold. It might be 30 seconds, but you'll have to check the spec on it. Whatever it is, it's easy to do, and there's plenty of time to do it. I'm gonna move back over to my computer for a moment. And if you've noticed, I've started with what's most basic. I, I started with dip switch. Now I went to a push to learn rolling code. Now I'm gonna show you a product that's a little more sophisticated that we offer. And here's all the receivers that we offer as the main part of our line. The product I'm going to show you now is the Hive 500 Plus. Now this is a receiver that's designed to hold 500 transmitters. Now I'll be frank, I, I showed you these other receivers with the push to learn button. They, they, they each hold 85 in their memory. I would probably recommend if you get anywhere past about 50 transmitters, 50 may even be pushing it. It depends on how patient you are. I'd go to something more sophisticated like this. Um, if you look at the back of our transmitters, let me come over here to this camera so I can show you whether you can see it or not. <laughs> We've got transmitter serial numbers and facility code. Obviously, it's not very clear. The resolution is pretty bad. But if you're familiar with this product, you'll see the the facility code and serial number down there. This system uses that facility code and serial number. And whenever you order our Monarchs, they're gonna come in sequence, no matter what. They're never randomly numbered. You can go in and with the two learn buttons that you see on this receiver, kind of zoom in, I don't know if you can see those two learn buttons. Um, you can go in and program these transmitters. You tell it what the first sequence is in the, num in, in the series, and then tell it how many transmitters you want to program in, and then it will automatically enroll all those transmitters, transmitters for you. Um, in addition to that, you've seen systems like these, but you can go in and delete a transmitter number, and it frees it up from the memory so that, say someone moves out, they don't turn their transmitter in. You can go delete that transmitter individually. In addition to that, th this does have 500 memory, Let's say, for example, you fill up all 500 spaces in this memory. And then you need to free up 100 spaces in there. You can go in and delete 100 transmitters. And after that, there's 100 free spaces in there. So it, it has 500 true memory. You're never uh, occupying a space permanently in, in the memory. So there, you can always use 500 transmitters at one time. And then we've got one that goes up to 800, and then one that even goes up to 1,600 if you have that many people on site. 
Um, on our website, you can see there's a, there's a training. If you get some time, look into this. Tyler, who's one of our great guys around here, did some cool videos um, that show the ease of programming and setting it up. Anyway, you can watch that in your free time. We won't let it interrupt what's going on here. All right. Um, now I'm going to head to Wiegand. Most of you are familiar with this term. For those of you who are not, Wiegand is a system that, that ties into another access control system. Um, so, so it acts like the brain to an access controller. So let's say that little, I showed you that little standalone 500 receiver. Let's say that's, that's not something you want. You want something a little more sophisticated. You've got a, a true access controller on site that has weakened inputs. You can go find, let's head over to our products again, receivers. Here are the Wiegand receivers we offer. This one's our most popular, just our 26-bit Wiegand. I'm going to click on that. We offer this product in 295 megahertz, 318 linear or dorking format, or 433 megahertz long range, which is part of the family I just showed you. I would steer, if I had the choice, everybody would use 433 megahertz. Um, nothing works better in the industry that I've seen. Uh, it's a very solid, again, the five-year warranty, and uh, there's just crowded frequencies um, in, in the other more popular ones, 318. You've got military that uses 315. That's always interfering. Um, the 433, I hear it every day from my customers, works pretty rock solid. Um, anyway, this receiver, if you've used other weekend receivers, and then you've used ours, you find that ours is very simple to use. And um, if I'd had the time, I would have one set up and ready to go. But there's a little, if you look at L2, there's a little light in there. And that light is a programming light. So you press this P1 button, that light will come on, and then you press one transmitter in. Then that system knows that you're using that transmitter and that facility code. And it passes the data through directly to a controller. And then at the controller, you can go in and manage and set up your, your transmitters, void, validate, whatever you need to do, set schedules. Um, in addition, this is really easy to, to set it to ignore facility code. Um, it's, it's done the same way. You press that P1 button, let go, and then you press it again, and then you can set it to ignore facility code. Very simple to do. I would say probably once you have it wired up, a 30-second programming process. And then you're good to go straight through your access controller to set everything up. Um, if this, if Weekend and, and these kind of systems are something new to you, and you'd like to learn no, more about it, just reach out to us. We're, we're really good at it. We understand it well. And we'd love to take some time with you to, to give you a little bit of training on how to do it. And we also have access control systems available that tie into these. Um, and, and you can look at other presentations we've done if you'd like to go into more depth about what those products are. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to take a minute to talk just about compatibles. Um, we have, just in transmitters alone, about, I haven't counted in a while, but last check, over 70 different kind of transmitters that we offer. So if you've got a transmitter that you're having a hard time finding, um, is no longer available, is obsolete, you can see I'm a lot better at managing transmitters and receivers than I am at managing a computer. <laughs> So um, it's really clear in here what we offer, 295 megahertz, 300 megahertz, 418 megahertz. Some of these that you can't find anymore, 418 is all but obsolete. But we've still got it available, and there are lots of sites out there that still use it. Um, again, over 70 different kinds of transmitters that we offer. We're confident about them. We're confident they'll work. Um, we're available to answer questions about that. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, and I can't emphasize enough, they truly work better. If you don't believe me, do a field test. They'll get better range. 
they'll work better, they'll last longer in the field. We are, we are very confident about that. Um, again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them in and we will answer them for you. Um, I'm getting close to wrapping up here, but I'd like to emphasize again 433 megahertz. See right here. Let's say you really love dip switch, but it just isn't giving you the range that you need. We have a 433 megahertz dip switch transmitter. And these are really popular for us. We have a transmitter and receiver. Uh, these work really well. You've got the same technology as dip switch, but you don't have the crowded frequencies that most of the dip switch systems are using. These are just as affordable as the other dip switch transmitters we offer. A lot of people don't know that we have these. I'm telling you, if you're going around and, and you love dip switch and it's what you want to keep using, get one of these systems out there and try it and put your logo on it. 433 megahertz dip switch transmitters are found, our, our version are found exclusively through transmitter solutions. So if, if you have a site that's using them, they're going to likely have just you as the source for them. So say your company logo's on there and then you have these transmitters as well, um, you've got not only exclusivity with the product, but you've got your logo on there as well as a source. So I, I don't want to discourage dip switch. It, it, works, it works great, especially if you go to 433 megahertz. And then here's our rolling code, which I touched on earlier. I love this product. I believe quite firmly that this is, for the price that offered, this is the best transmitter system that there is in the industry right now. Um, the range is awesome. The price is great. Uh, I, I am not going to quote any pricing here, but uh, reach out to your sales rep or call our main line here, and somebody can help you to find out what kind of pricing it is on this or reference any price list that you may have. Um, put us to the test with 433 megahertz. Um, try it out if you haven't tried it with your next installation. Uh, I'm confident that you'll love it. Not only is it easy to program, but it truly works great. All right, last thing. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, we had someone email over a logo. And it looks like it's already done and on the transmitter. So I'm going to move over to this camera. You see that? There we go. So the logo's on there. It's easy for us to do. We're good at it. We can put whatever numbering, whatever, anything you want on there. Um, I don't know anybody else who will do this for you. And the price is really affordable. You won't pay much more. Now, if, if you're using OEM transmitters currently, you move over to ours, and then you add a logo to it, you're going to be paying less still after that. So think about that. You're getting free advertising, paying less. You're getting a better transmitter. <laughs> We've got one other logo that was sent in that she just brought to me, if you want to look at it here. This one's multicolored. Yeah, if the camera would focus, that would be awesome. I think it's pretty good. Anyway, you get an idea. We love doing this. We're good at it. So thank you for attending, and have a great day.